Columbia University's computer science info session. My name is Rachel and I'm one of the admission counselors here at Sophia University. I am here today with my colleagues and the MSAS program chair and faculty who I will introduce in just a moment. Thank you so much for joining us today. We will start our info session by introducing program chair and faculty who will then give a slight presentation and answer student questions. Feel free to type your questions in the chat during the presentation. If you have any further questions, please feel free to ask them at the end or in the chat as well. Now let's begin our introductions. Our MSCS program chair is Dr. Donna Ann Dulo. Dr. Dulo is a computer scientist, software engineer, aviation legal analyst, and a cybersecurity analyst. She was with the Department of Defense for 36 years as a computer scientist and an aviation cybersecurity and software safety engineer, where she served as the chief of cyber and software flight testing for the U.S. Air Force Air Mobility Command. She is currently the program chair of computer science at Sophia University and has been with Sophia for over 10 years. She is a consultant for foreign countries and airlines, uh, airlines on airborne aircraft and airspace cybersecurity with clients such as the government of Taiwan, France, and several airlines. She is an expert on emerging technology law and wrote the seminal text on drone aviation law for the American Bar Association. She has interest in aviation, artificial intelligence, cybersecurity on airborne aircraft, and aerial robotics. She has published several books and dozens of journal artists, journal articles in the area of aviation law, cybersecurity, and software safety. We also have two of our MSDS faculty here with us tonight. Welcome Dr. Samani Abdai and Dr. Fadi Muhaida. Dr. Samani is in our Palo Alto campus. She is an accomplished faculty member and co-chair with strong background in higher education. She holds a PhD in computer science from University College Cork, Ireland, and has served as a faculty member of program director at Monster Technology University, as well as postdoctoral researcher at the University of Florida. Her expertise encompasses computer science, cybersecurity, networking, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and data analysis. In addition to her academic roles, Dr. Abdai has valuable industry experience in cyber threat intelligence and fraud analytics. She is dedicated to developing curricula, leading academic programs, and contributing to research in these dynamic fields. Her work focuses on bridging the gap between theoretical knowledge and practical application, effectively preparing students for the challenges of the tech industry. Dr. Fadi Mahadat is at Costa Mesa campus. He is a senior member of IEEE and is an associate professor of computer science and engineering and core faculty here at Sophia University. Dr. Mahadat worked as system and networking engineer for eight years. His research interests include artificial intelligence and natural language processing, elder care technology, cybersecurity, predictive analysis, Internet of Things, and cyber-physical systems. He has published 40-plus articles and book chapters in these areas. He received his PhD in electrical and computer engineering from University of Missouri, Columbia, USA. Now, let's begin our thing session. Now let's begin an info session and I will hand the floor to Dr. Dulo. Okay, thank you so much, Rachel. I'm gonna uh, share the screen and show the um, MSCS curricula. Uh, can everybody see? Yes. The curricula slide. So this is the, the Master of Science in Computer Science. We have mandatory core classes. There is an elective and then we have four different concentrations that you can choose from. So our curricula is a combination of computer science theory and practical application classes. We have two mathematics classes that are in the curricula, discrete mathematics and statistical analysis. Both of those mathematical uh, classes will help you with your um, theoretical computer science and practical applications in AI, data science, and uh, cybersecurity. Um, we are, our theoretical knowledge uh, comes from the systems programming class, uh, the discrete mathematics class, um, and the automata class. 
And the rest of the classes are practical applications of computer science, including data science, software engineering, data visualization, cybersecurity, machine learning, and our capstone, technical writing and analysis for computer scientists, which consists of a major writing project in the area of computer innovation. Now, our AI and machine learning curricula is very geared toward the AI spectrum, starting with um, an artificial intelligence class that maps directly with the machine learning core class. And then we have intro to robotics, and then you have a choice to choose either advanced topics in AI and machine learning or advanced robotics computing. Our cybersecurity focuses on both offense and defense, including a defensive class, um, an offensive class, forensics and attack analysis, applied cryptography, and advanced threat analysis. Our data science class continues from the data science and data visualization core classes and includes statistical analysis, the mining of massive data sets, either data modeling or advanced data visualization, and finally the advanced data science class. And then our human computer interaction curricula um, starts off with software engineering in your mandatory classes, then continues on into web development, interaction design, ethnographic research, and then advanced data visualization. So the whole program is 42 credits, 27 credits mandatory classes, three credits elective, and then 12 credits in your selected concentration. Now you can choose more than one concentration. I've had students take all concentrations. Um, that's between you. Um, and if you're on a visa, you would have to talk to our uh, DSO. Um, but if you're not on a visa, you can take as, as many um, concentration classes as you would like. And then most of our visa students, if they get an extension, they can take um, as many concentration um, concentrations as they want. Now, um, the curricula is modeled so that you can go on to a PhD after this program, or it, it can be modeled, um, it's modeled also for practical applications in um, the job market. Pretty much 100% of our students are working while they are in the program. So this is a very good program. We've gotten very good feedback on how this program helps students in their current job. Now, um, Dr. Fadi, do you have any uh, comments about um, the program, Dr. Fadi is our Costa Mesa core faculty member, and he helps the students down in Southern California. So Dr. Fadi, do you have any uh, comments? Oh, thank you, Dr. Dolo. I appreciate the introduction. Um, actually, just to emphasize what you said about, you know, the, the, pra the practical part of the, our program, like our courses, they mm -hmm. have like a lot of hands-on and, you know, prepare our students to be ready for their industry experience and the market. In addition to the strong kind of you know uh, foundation and background, um, those are all like you know exciting topics, you know modern topics, and they are ready for the market like cybersecurity, artificial intelligence. It becomes the buzzword now, talking about uh, you know uh, around us what is happening and the the beauty of our program where we have data analysis, cybersecurity, artificial intelligence, machine learning. They're all kind of com comprehensive list. Where students can, you know, you know, practice or learn the knowledge and practice, uh, you know, apply that knowledge and get them ready for their career. So I think that's kind of uh, my uh, contribution to this one. Thank you. Great, thank you very much. And I'd like to introduce Dr. Samani Abdi. She is our Palo Alto Campus Core faculty member, and she's in charge of all the students in our Palo Alto campus. And so, Dr. Samani, do you have any uh, comments? Yeah. Thanks, Anna, and welcome to our students for uh, this program. So, yeah, continuing with the, what Dr. Dolo said and what Dr. Mohidet said, so the program in AI uh, is um, like a foundation for the application of the AI to the cybersecurity as well. And in addition to those, we have the other uh, concentrations. So which you uh, students, actually, you're gonna get benefited from all those concentrations. So it depends on your interest. So um, you can take more than one. So which is recommended for the today's actually uh, career. 
and the job market so both ai so in uh, which ai gonna work actually but ai data science and cyber security so all are the trend of the market these days so um, you're gonna get hopefully a lot of benefit of these after finishing this program Oh, thank you very much. And I'd just like to talk about our faculty. Our faculty is both experienced um, with education. They all have uh, PhDs or master's degrees or multiple master's degrees. Um, and all of our faculty work. So all of our faculty are out there um, in industry with extensive industry experience. We cur currently have 14 faculty members in the computer science program that hail from eight different countries originally. And we speak, I believe, 14 different languages in our department. So we have a very wide uh, diversity in our department. And we have uh, many female instructors as well as male instructors. And um, we like to uh, work with the students one-on-one -on -one, and we take pride in our small classes so you're not going to be in a in a hall with 65 people. You're going to be in a smaller class with anywhere from 15 to 30 people, uh, students, and um, you will get individualized attention. Uh, the three of us you have um, an open door policy where you can contact us at any time if you need any help, and um, we will get back to you very very shortly once you uh, contact us. And we like to make sure that you are getting uh, what you want out of the program. So there's a lot of individualized attention in the program. And we also have a fabulous um, set of administrative staff, including our DSO, our student services, our librarian. So we're a very, we're a small school, um, but we have exceptional service for our students. And we take pride in giving our students um, a very valuable um, computer science degree at a very low cost compared to many other universities. But I, I would submit that our computer science program competes very well with the big computer science programs such as Stanford, Golden Gate University, et cetera. Um, so we have a very solid program. The program's been exist in existence since uh, 2015. And um, we have hundreds and hundreds, actually thousands of successful students out there um, in industry. Um, so thank you very much, and I'll, I'll hand it over to our um, staff um, if you have any further uh, comments. Thank you, Dr. Dulo. That was a wonderful <laughs> presentation. I just want to say that if you're interested in the program, you can just go ahead and submit an online application on the website sophia.edu and once it's submitted, it will send you a link to log into the application portal to submit documents. And uh, just to remind everyone, if you're interested in the next quarter, will start on January 13, 2025, and the application deadline for that quarter will be December 16th. And you will also be shared on the website as well. Yeah, and Dr. Drula, do you think it's time to open the floor for questions? Yeah, yes, P uh, please feel free to ask um, any questions at all from um, either me or uh, our faculty members. Any questions at all? You feel free to either shout them out or write them in the chat. Hi, Dr. Dula. Hi. And uh, hi, everyone. Dr. Ab Abdi and Mahad, Mahada, right? Sorry. <laughs> I have a little bit. Yeah, you're fine. You're fine. OK. And uh, <clears throat> um, I have a few questions regarding the uh, background and the prerequisite to take this uh, MB, uh, MSA um, um, program. And uh, my background is more like in the, I have an MBA from another US university mm -hmm. that's a, a while ago. And uh, AI and machine learning is definitely my interest. And, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, last, uh, my focus is more on the uh, accounting and the finance side. So mm -hmm. uh, my question is that um, if I do not have that many uh, mathematical statistics or computer science, um, you know, classes taken before. Um, is this a good, uh, um, 
is this course will be, you know, I will be eligible to take? Um, this is my first question. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I actually wrote the program from scratch in um, 2017. Um, okay. And the way I wrote it was that the program is progressive, which means if you don't understand anything about computer science, you would take the systems programming class first, as well as the discrete mathematics. So each class is independent. We don't have many prerequisites except on our advanced classes. So it takes you step by step through the sound principles of computer science. So we have had many, many students start the program without a computer science background and complete very successfully. Number one, because we do st start each class from the ground up in that specific topic. And number two, you have direct access to the faculty members. So if you do run into any problems, we can work one on one with you or assign you a tutor um, so that you can understand the um, the basic foundations of computer science. So it is a progressive curriculum. And if you have no experience, um, basically, you'll work with admissions and are and or, you know, at the beginning and they'll assign you two classes that will get you started. And then once you finish those classes, you'll take the next set of progressive classes and the next set of progressive classes so that you're not, you know, you're not going to take like, say, machine learning right away. You're, you're going to take the foundational courses first, and those foundational courses will prepare you for the uh, the next level of classes. Okay. Thank you very much. Oh, you're That's welcome. Good. That helps a lot. And my next question is regarding this program. Uh, how many students already graduated from this program and uh, uh, does the school keep track of their like, uh, um, job, finding job, the results of these students? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, and actually, actually um, we've, uh, we started the program in 2015 and we graduated our first set of students in um, 2017. Um, I don't have an exact number. Um, but there have been several thousand graduates um, from Sophia. And um, actually all of our students, well, not all, I would say about 95% of our students choose to work in the computer science career field. So we have an internship program that helps them, number one, get internship positions. And then most of the students actually stay in their jobs or actually get advancements once they finish um, the degree. So we work with them in what's called a work integrated learning program, which is built into the computer science program, where we have internship classes that help you deal with, you know, working in the business world, working in the computer science world. Um, and then we have counselors that help you find um, internships. So I would say about 95%, sometimes 100%. Uh, of our students are working and they continue to work. So we have a very, very high employment rate um, with our graduates, more so than many universities, because students are already working um, while they are in the program. Great, great, thank you. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I think my next question, uh, what really uh, amazed me about this AI, because I recently did a lot of research, uh, actually, uh, I really want to learn something I can use in my uh, actual work. Mm -hmm. Right now, I'm trying to figure out a certain way to improve the automation of the finance and accounting work, basically mm -hmm. help people improve their ability to use the AI tools to increase the efficiency, job efficiency. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I do um, saw uh, quite a lot of, you know, of business or companies, they already started to use this kind of tool. Mm -hmm. And uh, during my learning, I'm really interested to probably uh, find a way to uh, design certain application just to, for this uh, accounting and finance, the actual mm -hmm. work, which uh, I used to do. That's my uh, really uh, the goal to get involved in, into this uh, program. Mm -hmm. Well, well, our program covers what I call the full AI spectrum. So with artificial intelligence, you have kind of some subfields. So you have yeah. subfields like robotics that are basically hardware manipulation. Then you have 
data science, which is software manipulation, and then machine learning that's kind of in the middle. So okay. we cover that entire spectrum. So if you're going to be doing automation for any type of finance, you would definitely want to take AI concentration and perhaps even the data science concentration and kind of put those together because then that, that would give you the entire full spectrum um, from AI, from automation all the way through the data analytics and the data manipulation. Great, great. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Anybody else? Dr. Dole, I just want to, you know, elaborate a little bit about, you know, when he, sure. uh, you know, when our students mentioned about, you know, getting ready, um, am I ready for it? I mean, what kind of a background mm -hmm. or foundation? The good thing about our program, in addition to the, as uh, Dr. Dole mentioned, the progressive part of it and, you know, the foundation, and just we built to the top of that, we have a good learning community among our peer, our students. So they came from, again, different backgrounds, and they also create that community where they, support each other. So there's kind of a support network, either at the alumni level or at the student level, and they can share experience. And that's what we like about our program is everybody bring a perspective and we kind of, kind of you know, use that perspective to help everyone else and build that community. So that's something that I think is a, is a unique about what we have in, in our school. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, another question I have, sorry. Sure. I just and uh, how are the classes going to be conducted uh, through online or both on campus and online? Okay, okay. so <clears throat> we're on the quarter system. So we have four quarters going um, every year and a quarter is gonna be 10 weeks. And we okay. have two options for classes, online and hybrid. So hybrid is basically three five hour sessions throughout the 10 weeks with online sessions interspersed between those three. Um, so some courses are hybrid, some courses are online. Now, if you're on an F1 visa, you must take one on ground class per quarter or two. So depending on the, the specific classes, you'll either be in the hybrid class or you'll be in an online class. So those are the two formats that we have. It tends to work out um, really well for students. Um, and then the online sessions, too, are very as rigorous as the on-ground sessions. And so with online sessions, you'll be doing discussion questions, watching videos, um, doing work, et cetera. And then the on-ground sessions, you're going to have lectures and you're going to have class discussions as well. So it's, we call it a blended program because you're going to have classes with, with both formats. Okay. And uh, I know um, software has two campers. One is uh, in Palo Alto, another one is um, Costa Mesa, right? Yes. So uh, there's a program, uh, because I'm in LA, Los Angeles right now. Mm -hmm. So if I uh, happen you know, to take classes uh, here, probably most likely going to Costa Mesa. Mm -hmm. Another, um, uh, my question is that, uh, uh, do the school offer the uh, classes uh, to all the students uh, for both campuses or just for campus here? It's my question. No, no. Online, the online, online. online. Process, of course, I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, the, what we do is we have we have faculty at both campuses. Um, yeah. So the on ground classes you will attend at whatever with the campus of your choice, yeah. and then um, the online classes are taught by the entire faculty. So the oh, online okay. class may have a faculty member that's in Palo Alto or or Costa Mesa, and um, the on ground classes you will have the instructor there physically on your campus. Okay, so I think uh, um, for the job, you know, um, thinking, I think uh, because of the uh, Palo Alto probably is close to Silicon Valley. So um, how how does the uh, uh, school to, you know, have the students uh, to find in any internship in that area? How does that work? Well, well, actually, actually, believe it or not, Costa Mesa is in what's called um, Silicon Beach. So oh, there okay. are a lot of um, companies that are down there and more and more companies are actually tech companies are um, moving down to the Costa Mesa area. So there are plenty of um, internship jobs 
both in Costa Mesa as well as up here in uh, Silicon Valley. Um, so there, there's plenty of, of job opportunities. And, and the thing is that you don't have to work in a technical company. You, as, as, a, in, as a computer science major, you would work in a company in a computer position. So you could be working in many other domains if you choose, just you would just be doing a computer science type of job. Okay, okay, that makes sense. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dr. Dulo, if you don't mind, I'd like to go back a little bit when we were talking about like choosing campuses. And yes, mm -hmm. we do have two options for students to choose from, but we do recommend if you're an international student to try to stay in one campus. Mm -hmm. We understand that students move, like it, life happens all the time. But the thing is, if you would like to move from another, from one campus to the other, we will be needing to issue you new I-20. And that's extra paperwork that may take a few days. And uh, it may concern your visa status and legal stay in the U.S. So we would try to recommend students to try to stay in one campus so there will be no gap. So that's all I wanted to mention. I hope oh, that thank you very much for you. that. Yeah, that's very important. Yeah, good to know. Thank you. Hey, you're welcome. And any other questions? Well, just know if you have further questions, you can um, email Rachel or Karen and they will get the questions uh, to me if it's about the curriculum. And then we will get back to you um, with any um, answers to the questions, or if you want to hold uh, just a one-on-one -on -one with me or Dr. Fadi or Dr. Samani, uh, feel free to contact Rachel or Karen and they, they can set that up if you have um, any further questions. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. I might be able to, you know, make a visit to the um, Costa Mesa campus and just, uh, of course, I will make appointment with either Dr. Dula or Dr. Abdi or Dr. Mahudi Mahada. Yeah, if you want, if you want to visit the campus, uh, make sure you contact Rachel or Karen yeah, um, to I'll make sure that. that we have staff that are going to be there because our faculty are there usually on the weekends because most of the MSCS classes are on the weekends or online. Um, oh, okay. We have MBA classes that are during the weeknight. Um, but if you want to actually see a class or sit in on, on the class, our classes start uh, actually next Monday. Um, and then subsequent weekends after that, you would be able to come in and see a class. But make sure you, you contact Rachel or Karen um, to organize something like that. Oh, here, Roland has Roland has a, uh, a link right there in the chat. Thanks, Roland. OK, yeah, I definitely will, will make appointment before I come and to just to say, uh, you said, uh, Doctor uh, Dola. You said um, uh, I can just uh, to uh, maybe take uh, just one of the classes, which is uh, already uh, going on right now. Well, 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 our classes have just finished for for oh, the just summer. Oh, for the so summer. So we're, okay. we're we're on a we're on a two week break, and actually we're holding our graduation next um, Saturday, a week from this uh, coming Saturday. Oh, okay. And then our classes are going to start again on September thirtieth, and then. Um, we usually don't have classes the first two weekends, and so the the third weekend all the way to the tenth weekend, um, we will have classes at both campuses. Okay, gotcha. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And we have. Oh, sorry, doctors. Uh, yeah, I just yeah, I just wanted to point ahead. out that there is a question on chat. So Adnan uh, asked a question about the. CPT. So, uh, if uh, yeah, Professor Dolo, you want to take that question? So, okay, let me see here. Sure. CPT is not mandatory. Um, CPT is actually a benefit that's an option to international students, um, or if you want to do an internship as um, a U.S. citizen, you can actually do um an internship as well uh, but cpt is usually done with our foreign students and it is an option it is definitely not mandatory if you don't want to do um, curricu curriculum practical training is what it's called but we do have certain companies uh, who is willing to have the student to do the internship with them right 
Oh, yes. We, uh, our student services department has an entire spreadsheet of, of hundreds of companies that um, have uh, you, um, utilized uh, SOFIA students as internships and that have SOFIA students working as regular employees. So when you would apply, you would be put in contact with um, student services and they would help you with um, your selection of an internship company. OK, great. Thank you. Hmm? Oh, is there any like a scholarship? Offered yeah, actually, we, we do have scholarships. Um, I'll let Rachel and Karen um, talk about that because I don't know the administrative procedures for those. Yeah, we do have multiple scholarships for students to choose from. I'll be sharing the link soon in the chat. Give me one second. And you can see in the chat, you can view all the scholarship that we're offering listed on this page. If you have further questions about that, you can reach out to the scholarship committee. Their contact information is on this page as well. Students can apply for multiple scholarships, but if the application is successful, they can only be awarded one for the whole program. And the scholarship will be given out to students installments. I hope okay. that answers your question. Okay, great. Yeah, you're Thank welcome. You. These are all great questions. Any uh, any further questions? Okay, any last comments from um, the faculty? Oh, wait, here comes another question. If an international student prefers to opt for OPT instead of CPT, how can they ensure their eligibility and what steps do they need to take? So you would need to talk to um, uh, Ms. Uh, Romani, who is our DSO, for those kind of um, questions, because she's up on the latest policy procedures and laws regarding CPT and OPT. So Rachel and Karen can um, hook you up with uh, Romani and she would be able to answer those. Yeah, the International Student Office's email is in the chat. If you can refer oh, okay. to that. And mm -hmm. if you go to our website, you can just tap, type international student in the chat box or in the search box, the uh, international student page will pop up and where you can view the eligibility of CPT and OPT and our policies as well. Great, thank you, Rachel. So any further student questions? Faculty have any uh, parting comments? Um, I have a comment, just kind of um, assure us our students based on the experience we have with you know current students that the courses are doable, uh, meaning that you can manage your time, you can, you know, the nature of the amount of work we request, the uh, best again in the feedback we have a full time students who work and they were able to do you know uh, the assigned work and get the benefit and the experience they wanted and kind of achieve. Um, Kind of their uh, uh, academic goals and you know, to their uh, uh, career goals, and maybe also Dr. Dolo can talk about the badging. That could be also an important part mm. of our offering. So, would you mind, Dr. Dolo, maybe just you know elaborate on that and the badging? Yeah, we have a, a brand new program that that will be out shortly, um, where you take a, a, a certain number of classes, usually three to four classes and we'll give you a digital badge. So as you move through your classes, you'll collect digital badges. And what a digital badge is basically an icon that um, somebody can click on and get um, all of the objectives that you have taken so far with the, the current classes. So we have a digital badge in cybersecurity, a digital badge in robotics, a digital badge in AI, a digital badge in computer, uh, or excuse me, data science and um, three others. So digital badges are a really good way, you know, so if you take three classes, you get a digital badge, you put that on your resume while you're completing your uh, MSCS program. Oh, does the school also offer the PhD program for the computer science? Um, unfortunately, we, we do not. That probably will come um, later in the future. We have a Doctor of Business Administration, and then we have PhDs in psychology. Psychology, okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
So one thing I want to add uh, also, so uh, Dr. Dolo mentioned that, but I want to uh, mention that in more uh, details about the faculty that we have. So the faculty we have mostly they are PhDs with a very good background uh, in computer science, in LAC engine related to the courses that um, the hardware courses. So mo uh, the, um, uh, they are expert in the courses that they teach. So they gonna give the students a, a lot of practical work that they can actually use the those as the real world examples for their work or for their uh, career so uh, you're gonna get full benefits so most of them they are working in a very high quality uh, uh, companies here in Silicon Valley or at the Silicon Beach as you said so uh, yeah and uh, uh, they are very knowledgeable and um, we collect actually Dr. Dolo collected a very uh, you know uh, top uh, um, uh, faculties in their field so actually mm -hmm. uh, uh, those who um, teach on the um, um, data science and stuff so they are very top in their field those who they uh, are teaching in the um, machine learning AI they are in their uh, top in their field and they have a very good re research background on their field so we have very high quality uh, faculties also at the department so I wanted to mention that yeah thank you so and, and that brings up another um, uh, thing that we're, we're very into publishing so we help students if you want to publish professional papers we have plenty of mentors in the department that can help you we also have a professional writing lab that is free to all students so if you have an assignment or if you're writing a paper we have a phd that uh in english that runs that program and um you can send your paper or send your assignment and that person will um, look at it for for grammar and style um, and that's a free service so it's, it's a wonderful um, tool that we give to students we also have uh, several clubs and several activities uh, that go on throughout the year um, and this will help you um, meet other Sophia students and uh, students in other departments and such so we're a very vibrant community and since we're a small school um, you have a lot of benefits of, of meeting people and getting to know people while you're here working on your degree. Good, good to know. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Okay, Rachel, I'll, I'll give it back to you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Dula, for the presentation, and thank you, Dr. Samani and Dr. Fadi, for the introduction and your insights as well. And just a kind of reminder again, the application deadline for the next quarter will be December 16th. And if you're interested in any future quarters, you can just reach out to us at admissions at sophia.edu. You can find the contact information in the chat as well. And if you would like to ask some questions regarding CPT, OPT, I-20, you can reach out to International Student Office at dso at sophia.edu. Um, yeah, I guess that's all. Feel free to reach out to us if you have any further questions, and we hope we can see you in Sofia University in the future. Thank you very much. Thank and you. Thank you. Goodbye, everyone. Have a great yeah. rest of the day. Bye-bye. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Good night. Thanks.